Hi all, I have another amazing game to show you of Leela Chess, so Stockfish 6 against Leela. And Leela playing on this occasion, set to play a thematic opening, a variation of the Dutch defence, the Stone Wall defence. So this is of great strategic significance to see how an engine can play this position. There are particular holes on the dark squares, and what seems to be a bad bishop usually in the Dutch Stone Wall. But players like Magnus Carlsen have used the Stonewall uh, opening with great success on occasion. Uh, so let's see how Leela plays it. So white castles here, bishop d6, b3, as if maybe bishop a3. This is often interesting with the knight still on b1. This is often used by white as an idea. I think it stems from Botvinnik to weaken black further on the dark squares by removing the defender. We see queen e7, which does stop that for a moment. If white persists, white could persist with a4 sometimes, but doesn't here. We have bishop b2. Later there could be a plan of queen c1 and bishop a3 quite often in, in human games. Black castles, we have knight e5 here, bishop d7. The bishop has an idea of coming out to h5, it seems. So the d7 square is important to use in the right way here. And you could argue this is a good way of using it. Bishop e8, the bishop wriggling out potentially. Knight d f3. And we see actually here the move a5. Knight d3. Bishop h5. So Leela is using that bad bishop in inverted commas quite well here. This looks like a human is playing with the black pieces basically. My good friend Paul Georgiou also has used the Dutch stone with great effect. And he often describes this bishop not just as a bad bishop, as the hero piece, the unexpected hero quite often when this breaks free. We see here knight f e5, rook e8, queen c2, knight bd7, e3. And now we see the move g5, very, very aggressive move. Rook a c1, h6, a4, queen g7. So the advantage of that g5, it did give g7, which the queen is now using. Knight takes, knight takes, f3. And now you might think this is this next move looks a little bit on the dodgy side. Uh, the bishop here hasn't actually got that much scope, and white might break with e4, which could be painful for black potentially. So this next move commits kind of a blocked in bishop here. But the one perk it does have is that it reduces the e4 pawn break potential because we see white now playing f4. So the upside of this g4 is to make sure e4 is not really on the cards now, but it does hem in the bishop even further. Can this bishop still be a hero piece at any point in this game? And my glasses are misting because it's a very, very hot day. So let me demystify my glasses before trying to continue demystifying this game okay <laughs> very hot day here in the summer knight f6 is played now and the bishop yeah it does seem like a stranded piece at the moment knight e5 rook e b8 rook f d1 the bishop goes back actually to e8 queen e2 uh, now we have h5, bishop c3, which looks at a5, so our whole rook's been tied down here. And now uh, we have an interesting uh, transaction here, h4. White maybe is playing for a win here in, in computer chess terms, and potentially could have ignored this pawn on h4. For example, white could, could have played, say this, and if h3, I, I think this is such a fortress position, but this could be in black's favour. The knight here is going to be a right pain. Uh, and if it's ever taken, then it might be a pain for white, this. Black has an advantage, technically. But there is another way of, of ignoring this h4 pawn. It was taken in the game. If rook c2, uh, to sort of uh, give the option of taking immediately on e4, if any knight e4... Uh, now let's say b5, this position seems very fortressy. It seems as a logical result of this would be um, drawish. Uh, um, so anyway, but white played g takes h4. 
Now, from the perspective of, of telling a story of this bishop being a potential hero, you can see that this pawn has got the potential for g3 as a pawn break, which opens up this diagonal, potentially. I think that's something that should be noted here with this g takes h4, but from an engine view, this is a perfectly fine move. From a long-termist point of view, there is a bit of dynamic piece potential, which has just been created. <coughs> now, king h7, queen e1, bishop c7, queen e2, bishop d8. It seems some shuffling here, which seems fairly pointless, but the bishop is protecting a5 here. Knight d7 challenging e5 now. Queen g3, knight f6, queen f2, rook c8. Some shuffling. And some odd shuffling for king h6. You might think this is a bit of a teasing move. What's going on here? Bishop e1, rook c7, queen e2, rook c c8, c5. Yes, this is a big change in the position, actually, c5. Uh, what it does mean now uh, is that this is a potential liability sometimes. If black ever takes on e5, this could be weaker and a target on c5. That's something to bear in mind as a potential liability. An option would have been c takes d5 here. So, for example, c takes here. This seems fairly even, or white has a small edge here. Uh, so c5 maybe has a tiny bit of controversy associated with it. Uh, rook a7. This seems quite nifty. Uh, against any targeting of b7 in advance. Rook c a8. White's preparing, it seems, the b4 break. Knight d7, knight d3. Knight f6, b4, as prepared. Black takes, so there's pressure on b7. And white is content to lose a4 for b7. And that happens now. Bishop c7, knight e5, rook a2. This rook goes back. That goes there. Queen d1. And now we see bishop takes e5. So this is interesting. White takes with the f pawn. If white takes with the d pawn, then there's a liability aspect, I believe, here off the knight d7. The c5 is a bit of a target, and this position should be okay for black. It seems as though you know there's potential for g3 there as well. The a file pressure on c5, maybe queen e7 there. It seems as though black's got a good game there. So white took with the f pawn. But that's got its own tiny bits of controversy as well, because you can see that this bishop now has two candidate diagonals potentially, with either g3 opening up on that diagonal, or f4 on this diagonal. Knight h5 is played. Bishop f1, and now bishop g6, so f4 does seem like a great move. This often dead piece is now threatening to activate with f4. We see rook b6. Uh, if bishop d3, as an example here, f4 is okay. This position is interesting. Uh, this kind of continuation is fairly interesting. It's an even position. Black's got rid of the bad piece in the vertical commas, the bad bishop. So anyway, we see rook b6, f4 hitting the rook. And white plays a naughty tactical move, rook takes c6, inviting loss of b1. Black cannot take on b1 here, really, uh, because, well, black played queen f7. If uh, instead bishop takes b1, then rook takes e6 check, queen takes b1 check, queen b6. This is really nasty, quite as big as white chair. You can see that there's a lot of pressure, there's rook h6, there's, yeah, it's, it's a lot of pressure in this position. So uh, we see actually Queen F7 just holding the E6 pawn and saying, well, thank you for liberating my bishop, by the way. I'm holding on to that little fact that you've given me. So E4 was played here. Now, this is also quite a tactically venomous move. If D takes, then D5, this position is nice uh, for white, potentially. There's big past pawns here on the queen side. White has a big edge here, uh, potentially. So we see actually bishop takes e4, uh, which gives a weakening, basically, of this third rank. And guess what white plays to try and tactically punish Leela in this position? White's play, if I give you five seconds. Okay. Rook takes e6. This is forcing the win of the queen, basically, if this is 
taken it is taken because otherwise well maybe g4 dropping off after etc so it is taken and we have rook b6 pinning the queen to the king but is it the start of the story or the end of the story knight g7 was played now here it seems as though technically best might have been to just take the queen straight off the bat uh, for example this position bishop d3 uh, not queen takes g4 because of rook g7 pinning white's queen but bishop d3 here uh, <clears throat> pardon me so bishop d3 there this rook a1 this position where black can grab at least the perpetual check in these variations with the queen keeps uh, checking the king uh, but in the game actually the game lived on actually without a perpetual check scenario because here white didn't take the queen instead queen d2 was played and then we have rook a1 uh, potentially sorry rook a1 potentially for the moment um king uh, h7 was played rook takes knight takes holding f4 but we have this potential for rook a1 which will create a pin in the position queen before rook a1 which is dangerous for white c6 was played if bishop f2 just to demonstrate then rook b1 is a nice tempo gainer to double the rooks on f1 hitting the queen so queen c3 rook a to a1 is nasty for white so basically uh, c6 trying to do something with this past pawn but uh, we have rook here and now there's potential things like g3 g2 on the cards c7 rook c2 keeping this under lock and key first check knight g7 queen b4 this is taken and black at leisure now can come back and use the pin now pressure okay the, this rook is not coordinating with the other rook and that rook's hit so it's moved with tempo against the queen queen a5 rook c8 moving out the way e6 trying to use this other pawn now but here g3 with a big threat of g2 using that nasty pen hg fg bishop d2 rook c2 and the game ended here actually as an example continuation it was adjudicated in black's favor because if e7 g2 basically it doesn't matter now about this e7 pawn it's not going anywhere anyway g takes this this position is even if that queens this is like basically a forced checkmate sequence here there's a very forced checkmate sequence which can be invoked yeah <laughs> that's quite a neat coordination here so here it was it's actually totally lost for white on e7 as, as an example shows if the bishop moves there's also things like rook g2 exploiting the pinned uh bishop on f1 you know this is just an example rook g2 check so yeah uh so the game ended here on rook c2 so the dutch stone wall was used with great effect here and the fascinating implications of the so-called bad bishop were revealed uh, with moves like g takes opening up potential for g3 but also f takes opening up potential for f4 later you can see that the bishop the so-called bad bishop had diagonals of usage later in this game the way the game evolved okay i hope you got something from that especially if you're a dutch defense stonewall player you might find this game interesting let me know especially comments questions like shares appreciated thanks so much